What's good, everybody? Uh, video on more some more advanced topics of uh, lawn tech that I hadn't seen on YouTube. So yeah, so I'm just gonna be using Overleaf. Feel free to follow along, and uh, let's just get rid of all of that. And so I'm gonna start with. Uh, the easiest and it'll get progressively more complex or maybe more unknown so if you know the early stuff uh, feel free to stick around you might learn something first thing I want to start off with is the most common one but also still slightly unknown by kids writing homework and that's the uh, new command command so as you may know a lot of the com all commands in LaTeX are started with a backslash so you can write backslash new command and create your own command so we can make our own command kop and whoops kop and make it equal to programming like that and um let me just put this up here and maybe i'll just use that so i don't have to keep writing out uh, the name of the channel over and over. Let's recompile. And there we go. So that's just a quick shorthand. A, a good use case for this might be that uh, if your class has a particularly strange way of defining, let's say, a mathematical symbol, like a vector, for example, maybe it's um, the using the arrow on top or the bold face or something else. Right. Next, you can also define new commands with arguments. So we can write new command, name of the command, saying greet and greet and eat, let's say. Takes two arguments and it goes, again, you reference your input arguments with the pound sign and the number. So it takes two arguments. This is the first one, comma, you, a, I don't know, and this is the second one, okay? So that's the first one, that's the second one. And so when we write greet and eat, um, hello, beans, and recompile, hello, comma, you, a, beans, because that's the first one. The second one, you can delimit them with uh, curly braces. This can be useful to like redefine a uh, mathematical symbol. So for example, you can something like that. And there we go. You could do something uh, of that nature. The way that the LaTeX way to declare uh, commands or macros but you can also use them using classical tech. Uh, for those that don't know, I guess uh, LaTeX is just a bunch of uh, functions and commands written in classical tech to make working with classical tech easier because plain tech is kind of uh, more cumbersome to work with. But you can still use plain tech, so you can use def for a definition and uh, you know number signs for the arguments like this. And you can still do the same uh, idea here. Hello, one, eat, two. Oh, and I forgot the name of this function, so we'll say hello and eat. And if we write hello and eat, Tina. I don't know why I'm just thinking about eating beans all day, to be honest, but here we go. Um, that's, And these can actually be nested, so you can have nested arguments. So we have hello and eat there, and then def more, and have a new argument. This is a new argument that more is going to take. So we have to let it have a new namespace. So you just add it by adding a pound sign there. And you can write, uh, let's say, and more of 
the first argument. So now we can, let's say, um, get rid of this, put it down here, and then write more, and I don't know, lentils. I'm getting healthy today, guys. I'm getting healthy like that. So now we're actually calling this more function from within this function. So these, all of these are in their own namespace. So let's see, I still have ho and eat. Bank. Once again, I have written the bang sign instead of one. Sorry about that. So, and more lentil. So let's see eat beans and more lentil. Cool, cool. So that's nested functions. So not only can you um, make functions, you can also define entire environments. So an environment changes the behavior of all the text within it. For example, we're currently in a document environment, which will uh, give us you know, those massive margins that LaTeX is known for. But we use an environment, which is you know where all the fancy math, you know, gets done or whatever. So those are environments. So you can also define your own environments like so you write new environment and the name of your environment. So let's say my n one and we'll have then you have to have two arguments. One is some tech that will execute before your environment and one that will execute after. So the one before could be just for demonstration, hello, uh, and then, you know, and here, all right. And maybe we should call this strange letter. So we can begin strange letter and say um, learning new LaTeX and now we can recompile hello I'm learning new LaTeX and smell you later so this is kind of interesting that these so this gets called at the beginning, the first one, and the second one at the end. Of course, this isn't usually the case that you'd want to use it. You probably want to do some formatting. For example, it is they have this environment called king, where every time it's in it, it's all fancy with two squares on the left and right. Uh, let me show you. Begin king and hello subject. I don't know. And so basically, they're just, uh, I'll just let you guys know how it looks like first. It says, hello, subjects. He's got the squares on the left and the right. Thing you can do, which is pretty interesting, is conditionals. So we can create a conditional new if. So uh, they kind of work like if statements in normal, regular languages. So you write, first you have to write new if and uh, the name of the conditional, so if proofs, let's say, then you have to write, uh, remember that this if has to be there, so then you write the name of the if, so proofs, and uh, whether it's truthy or falsy, let's say true, so now we have a proofs variable that's true, and say uh, later in our document, um, a paragraph, let's say, and if proofs uh, we can write some text that will be uh, inserted if that variable up here that proofs variable is set to true then you can write else and um, you write text that would be substituted in if the variable was false And then you write fi, kind of like a bash script. So here's the claim. This is self-evident. Here's this is self-evident uh, because we said this is the first condition, right? So now we're gonna set proofs false, 
and recompile, and hopefully, okay, bang, awesome. So here's a claim, I believe this is an express reader, so that was our other clause. Great, and so you can use this, for example, to lengthen documents for extra detail, but just all keep it in the same tech file, but maybe you have different make file scripts or something, and you can just easily set them there. You can also set them on the command line, set those variables uh, for falsity or truth uh, uh, on the command line. I won't be covering that here because I just want to do an overleaf, but that's totally something you can do for like your scripts and stuff. Also note that this doesn't have to be proofs false. It could really be proofs anything. It could even be nothing. Um, really doesn't matter. I just like proof. Of course, if you have a lot of if thens, then this is kind of a hack almost in base tech. So you wouldn't really want to use that. You would probably want to use the package if then. So use package if then like that. And then you have a much you have a much cleaner syntax for declaring uh, if statements, which is like so. I've just pasted it in to save time. If then else, open a bracket. Uh, you can set the conditional. So this is if, and this is the else claim. So to translate our previous thing in this format, and look at that, look at that. You can see it right here. I believe this is exercise to the reader. So very cool stuff. You can use the if then package. All right, and the last thing I wanted to cover real quick, just thought it was uh, in terms of commands that I thought was interesting is for looping. So we can, so it doesn't come with for looping out of the box, but you have to use a package. So we can use the package pgff or. All right, and so this is the for each command. It kind of feels like a Python list comprehension, um, if you're familiar with that. So you just write for each, name of the variable, let's call it lm, lm, hope that's not reserved, in, and then you give it like an array of uh, elements. So beans, uh, what to do with those. So for each of those, we can write we should buy some and then n. And that, oh my gosh, sorry, I meant to say lm, not n. I don't know why I did that. And we should buy some beans, we should buy some sprouts, we should buy some milk. Ooh, sorry. That's a huge noob move on my part, sorry. The backwards quotes still gets me to this day. There we go. Uh, I don't know why I, I quoted them, it kind of looks. We should buy some beans as if I'm doing something nefarious. I'm not doing anything nefarious, just so you guys know. Um, and yeah, so the PG4 gives you a lot of action, a lot of interesting stuff. So that's basically it. Those are a few commands. I didn't see too much of them on YouTube, so I thought I'd make a video. Pretty, and like, you know, you could use them. You could nest them in an enumerate list and then have them make all the lists. Um, there's a lot of good stuff you can do with these commands. Now, you may be wondering, is... LaTeX Turing complete and indeed it is and the easiest way to prove that would be to show the SKI lambda calculus operators for those wondering this is what they look like Emerson also I did not come up with this the SKIs were from a book called LaTeX with friends uh, LaTeX and friends I think I highly recommend it I thought this was really just for fun I wanted to uh, show you guys an interesting package that comes in Overleaf, believe it or not, called TechMate, which is basically like Checkmate except for tech. And uh, it's just a fun little chess package. Uh, so you can write a chess game. So I can write 1, E4, E5. Uh, and end it like that. And then I think show board, and I hope I did it the right way. And look at that. You can get the name of the moves, and it will automatically show the board for you. I just thought this was super cool. You just have to put it in these pipes. And if you know, like, algebraic chess notation, then, like, it all works. Check out the CTAN.
packages are here. This is like the NPM for uh, LaTeX packages. And if you go to, sorry, they have like interesting categories. So I just like, you know, this is where the, I found the chess one is the games topic. So they got tons of different games that people have made. And uh, you better like reading because the documentation is uh, pretty massive. Peace.